Hey, there's new firmware for the Axe FX3. It is so cool. Want to see how to install it? Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Doug B, and like a lot of you, I got my Axe FX3 and didn't do a darn thing to it other than plugging in and letting her rip. And really, isn't that like all you want? It sounds great right out of the box, and it has enough presets to keep you busy for years. When I first turned mine on, I stayed on that first preset, 59 Bass Guy for like three days without even trying anything else. I mean, it literally sounded just like my old 65 basement that I had back in the early 70s, but it didn't crap out in the middle of a gig like my 65 basement often did. Now, now I've been buying music gear since the early 70s, and since I got my FX3, I've sold all my pedals and will be selling the rest of my amps soon. I, mean, I, I just have no need for that stuff anymore. Everything I need is already in the FX3. Much thanks to Cliff Chase and his crew at Fractal Audio for creating some truly amazing gear. I started this channel because I see a lot of guys out there that pretty much have the same questions that I did when I first got it. A lot of guys are confused on how the FX3 actually works. They don't want to know every little single thing about it but they do want to know the basics and how to get around the interface. And uh, I'm one of those guys, I've, I've got to admit. I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube about the FX3. And, you know, there, there's a lot, a lot of great material out there. But so much of what these guys talk about goes way over my head. I, you know. I mean, like I said, it's it's not the easiest piece of gear, but it sounds so, so, so good. So I want to make a series of videos that just explain one concept at a time. Not really long at all, like maybe 10 minutes or so at the most. I know what can happen if it runs longer than that. If it goes over 10 minutes, you've forgotten what I talked about 10 minutes ago, and then you got to rewind it again. And, you know, and, and watch it over and over just to get it, uh, you know, and people get discouraged if they have to keep going back. So this, I just want to keep it simple, real simple. So basically you just do one thing, that's it. You know, no reason to strain your brain on this stuff. Regular life does that to us enough as it is. One of the questions that I have seen over and over again, and a lot now, now that version 16 of the firmware is out, is how do I update the firmware on my FX3? So I thought that this would be a great topic for the first episode of this channel. And you know, guys, I hope you like it. And if you have any other ideas of topics you'd like me to cover, send them my way, leave them in the comments. I'd be glad to look at it and see what I can do. And thanks in advance, much appreciated. As of the date of this filming, Cygnus is the 16th major firmware revision for the Axe FX3. All of the app models were updated and there were other revisions done as well. Firmware is the software that runs on the FX3. Every firmware update usually brings improvements on how to the unit sounds or there's new amps or new pedals added or cabinet improvements. And just to show you how dedicated the guys at Fractal Audio are, when I started this project, Cygnus was the current release. Since putting my notes together and getting everything ready for this series, they are already up to 16.02. Yeah, they've done two more upgrades to Cygnus since I started this project. These guys are just, they're tireless. There are a few things that you'll need to be able to update your Axe FX3. First, you'll have to use a computer. 
either a Mac or a PC. I have a Mac Mini, so that's what I'll be using, but the PC version should be similar. Okay, second, you'll need a USB printer cable to connect your FX3 to your computer. One side has what's called a Type-A plug, and the other has a Type-B plug. You can find them online starting at under $8. But if you're like me, you have a computer cable stash box with at least three of these cables that you, knew, you just knew you could use again someday. Okay, go ahead, dig it out. I'll wait. Done yet? Come on, man, we gotta get going. Time's a-wasting. So connect the square end of the cable, that's the type B plug, to the USB port on the back of your FX3 and connect the other end of the cable to your computer. Now you can turn on your computer in the FX3 if they weren't on already. If your computer asks if you want to connect the FX3 as an interface, disregard that for now. Okay, finally, you'll need the software. First, let's go to fractalaudio.com. Click on support, then click on downloads, and in the drop-down menu, choose FractalBot. This is the app that you will use to back up your system and install new firmware. As you can see, there are versions available for both Mac and Windows users, along with the manual. Download the version that's right for your computer. Now go back up to the top again, go to Support, choose Downloads again, and then click on Axe FX3. Now here you'll find all the other files that you should download. The Owner's Manual, the Fractal Audio Block Guide, the latest firmware, the updated preset banks, and then the USB files for Windows users. If you're using Windows, download all of the files. If you're using a Mac, download everything except for the USB files. Again, I'll provide a link. I've already downloaded all of the files except for the firmware, so I'll go ahead and do that now. And just like that, it is done. So after you finish downloading the files, if you're on Windows, install the USB driver. I'll include the link in the comments that explain this procedure. Mac users can skip this part. Okay, now install FractalBot and then open it. Click on the Select Device drop box and go down and choose Axe FX3. If everything is connected correctly, you'll get three green check marks. Okay. Now I know you're all hyped to install the new firmware and rock on, but let's be practical and back up your old system first. Why? In case there's any problems with the new firmware update, you can always go back to the old system, install everything, and your system will be back up and running. Okay, go to FractalBot and on the top click on Receive Mode. That means that FractalBot will receive the files that are currently on your FX3. It will show you the default location where it will back up your files. Click on Browse if you'd like to change the save location. Otherwise, click on Begin, which is right under Receive Files. This process will probably take a while as it is backing up all the data. So click on OK. All right, we're done. Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing here so far, go ahead and hit that like button and you can just tap that subscribe button lightly if you'd like to. No need to smash anything, you know, unless you're on a Pete Townsend kick. Okay, now you can get prepared for that big adrenaline rush known as updating your software. Okay, go to your Downloads folder and click on the arrow next to the folder that starts with Axe FX3. You'll see that it contains three files. A release notes, a readme, a firmware update guide, and then this file here that ends in SYX. 
That one is the firmware file. Okay, go back to Fractalbot and click on Send Mode. You'll be sending the firmware to the FX3. Next, you'll want to send the file, so click on Browse. And there's that file. Click Open, and now click Begin. Again, this could take a few minutes. Hey, look at that. It updated successfully. But read the message first before plugging your guitar in. You need to power down your FX3 for a minimum of five seconds before turning it on again. If you want to make sure that it updated correctly, press the E knob here, and up here you will see the version. And it did indeed update to 16.02. Now you can plug your guitar back in and rock out. There's one more thing you might have to check, just in case your preset sounds thin, and sometimes that happens with these major firmware updates. In that case, what you'll want to do is a soft reset. And what that does is it sets most of the parameters for that amp back to their default settings. Let me show you how that's done. Now you can look, there's five knobs underneath the screen. Directly above each knob is a box listing the function. Find the push knob that has layout, mine is B, and press it. This brings up the grid. Now if you don't see the amp block, press the A push knob and that brings up the entire grid so you can see it. And you can press A to go back. So now what you want to do is use the nav arrow to go over to the amp block and press the edit button. And now you'll see there's the whole list of amps. The current amp is highlighted in blue. So you can use the value knob, just switch to another amp, and then switch back. Press the store button, which is right here. Now press the enter button. And see, it gives you a message. It says, do you want to overwrite the preset? Enter equals yes. Exit equals no. Press enter again. Boom! Saved pops up on the screen. Okay, that's it. Enough for now. No need to strain your brain any further. Let back to playing again. Wait a second. How did that one guy say to do it? Oh yeah. Rockin! Hey guys, thanks much for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it. So it wasn't too bad, was it? I mean, how did it go for you? Uh, leave me a note in the comments. Let, let me know. And like I said earlier, if there's any other topics that, you know, you're just not sure of and you'd like me to tackle, leave me a comment and I'd love to take a look at it. So that's it for uh, episode one. I'll see you next Friday. Okay, how... What? No!
That's it, guys. See you next time.